Hi, right, let's talk about the village. <laughs> Musical styles are still a very important form of communication for our young people. Okay, we all know how we feel about this movie, and I'm just as offended as you are that I'm having to talk about it. We all know who wrote it, and we all know how we feel about that as well. Throughout the episode, you're going to be thinking, well, why is Incredit talking about this movie positively then? Well, my dear friends, as I've stated before, this channel is dedicated to what makes films great, not what makes them seeming piles of shit. Also, I was paid to do this. Also, also, Roger Ebert summed up this film better than I could ever hope to by saying, and I quote, The Village is a colossal miscalculation, a movie based on a premise that cannot support it, a premise so transparent it would be laughable were the movie not so deadly solemn. To call the ending an anticlimax would be an insult not only to climaxes, but to prefixes. It's a crummy secret about one step up the ladder of narrative originality from It Was All a Dream. It's so witless, in fact, that when we do discover the secret, we want to rewind the film so we don't know the secret anymore." End quote. <laughs> Keep revving in heaven, Roger. You're an angel now. Anywho, The Village came out in 2004, produced by Scott Rudin, who has a laundry list of credits under his belt, most notably Sister Act, The Addams Family, and its sequel, The Truman Show, and Sleepy Hollow. Roger Deakins, someone who I've said since our first episode is the greatest cinematographer of all time, also joined the team to ensure this film looked as stunning as possible. Even James Newton Howard lent his musical talent to the production, and the quality really shows. The cast is so full to the goddamn brim with talent, it makes my head spin, so let's break it down. Joaquin Phoenix from Gladiator, Signs, and Joker, William Hurt from AI Artificial Intelligence, Tuck Everlasting, and Captain America's Civil War, Bryce Dallas Howard from Spider-Man 3, Terminator Salvation, and the Twilight series, Sigourney Weaver from the Alien franchise, Ghostbusters, and Holes, Adrian Brody from King Kong, The Brothers Bloom, and Peaky Blinders, Brendan Gleeson from Braveheart, 28 Days Later, and Gangs of New York, Judy Greer from Elizabethtown, Mad Love, and Archer, and Michael Pitt, who was in Dawson's Creek prior to this, and would go on to have an amazing leading role in Boardwalk Empire. Now, to back up a moment and expand on an earlier point, I don't want to harp on the ending and how it retroactively ruins a large portion of the film. There are far too many videos on why the movie is bad, and what would be the point of me beating a dead horse. So, instead, let's sift through the bullshit and talk about the few positives that the film has, one being on screen and the other off. There are a lot of films that have rough productions throughout the entire process, and as a result, come out terrible. You only need to watch the Super Mario Bros. movie to understand that point. And then there are the films that are well-crafted and cared for, but still fall short, and this film is firmly in the latter of those camps. Even as the set production and wardrobe began, M. Night didn't just give his cast their scripts. He had them go through a 19th century style boot camp to get them fully ready for the world they were stepping into. That alone can create a wonderful bond between the cast that can elevate their performance when the time comes. It's something that was done with Saving Private Ryan, and the result was a clear on-screen chemistry between the entire group, and the effect is felt the same here. It makes scenes feel much more authentic, whereas they could have easily come off as flat otherwise. Weeks were spent storyboarding the particular shots and color schemes they were aiming for, as well as to figure out how they wanted the creature itself to look. During that time, James Newton Howard created some really wonderful string music to ensure the scenes had the light and warm tones when it needed them, and had the foreboding and mysterious vibe when it called for it. They even talk about trying to relate the mood of the music as closely to the main character as possible. James came up with the idea of, of using Hilary Hahn, who's this world-class violinist. I've been a fan of her work for a long time, even though she's only 24 years old. To have, you know, a, a young lady play the theme and, and the emotions of a movie that has a lead character who's the same age and very much like her, some strong young female perspective would come to the movie that would be truthful. Rather than using an existing town or soundstage, they decided to build the entire village from the ground up to ensure it had the exact look and feel they needed, as well as to perfectly plan out their shots in accordance with the earlier mentioned storyboards. During production, they even encountered severe weather but still pushed through with dedication and resolve. But if we're talking behind the scenes stuff, 
then arguably the greatest yet simplest thing M. Night did to make the film feel as solid as possible was simply by giving the actors the space and the respect they deserve to really let their performances shine. I hired so many theater trained actors to be able to do long takes without interruption. It's like saying to the actors, I trust you to the ultimate extent. I like that awkward shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice. I'd like the way you were playing it. This was basically the education for me of a lifetime with regard to directing actors because I basically cast all these world class actors in all the parts and they demanded and deserved all my attention. And personally, I think that that sort of leeway to allow a cast to really sink into their roles, as well as giving them the attention as soon as they require it, is something that isn't done enough in recent cinema, and I really hope we do get back to that. All that to say, this wasn't just made on a whim. Even if the end result wasn't amazing, there was clearly love and attention put into the development of this project, and I think it really shows. And even if everything doesn't come together in the end, here's one thing that still really shines regardless of whatever else is going on screen. At the moment of writing this, I'm hard pressed to think of an on-screen relationship that's as soft yet intense as the relationship between Joaquin's Lucius and Bryce's Ivy. Pretty much any scene where they're together, their body language and tone are noticeably different than with anyone else in the village, and there's a massive reserve of emotion and struggle that's keeping them both together and apart at the same time, if that makes sense. And while I can't show every scene due to A, not wanting to bore you, and B, not wanting to get copyright strike to hell and back, I can simply show you the biggest one, and you can check the rest out for yourself if you're so inclined. When we are married, will you dance with me? I find dancing very agreeable. Why can you not say what is in your head? Why can you not stop saying what is in yours? Why must you lead? When I want to lead, if I want to dance. Am I telling you? The only time I feel fear as others do is when I think of you in harm. That is why I am on this porch, Ivy Walker. I fear for your safety before all others. And yes, I will dance with you on our wedding night. The scene blows me away every time. Put all the other shit aside for a moment, and it's just an incredibly sweet moment between two people who really care about each other, who have different ways of handling and showing it, and who only want to see each other safe during uncertain times. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't expect anyone who hates this movie to suddenly turn around and like it. I still don't really like it if I'm honest, but after tackling this episode, I at least have a newfound respect for the effort that went into this. And I think the lesson of doing your best and still falling short is a lesson that everybody can take to heart. Also, really quick, before we wrap things up, I cannot end this without showing you what is hands down the single best scene M. Night has ever shot in his career. I love you more than the sun and the moon together. And if you feel the same way, then we should not hide it any longer. <laughs> but I'm curious, what do you think? Styles are still a very important form of communication for our young people.